Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast. Golly, that's loud for this time of the morning. <laughs> Hello, it's the In Wheel Time car talk show coming up. Where does Houston rank in car loan debt compared to income? It's a ratio, and we're going to talk to Mr. Chip Lupo about that. You'll be surprised. Jeff has a feature on trips, taking your dog on a trip with you. Pets. Okay. Uh, pets? You said dogs. Pets, dogs, yeah. Dogs are pets. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. Nice. So you could take your pet turtle on it. You got or something goldfish. for goldfish. Goldfish. Yeah. Okay. Right, just check it. Mm-hmm. Mars reviews the new Subaru Forester. Mm. <laughs> just ahead on this segment of the two-hour in Will time car talk show. Howdy. Along with Mike out of this world, Mars, we always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad you could join us today, David Ainsley, sleeping in. Yep. All right. Let's get right to it. Let's talk about money or lack thereof. I was talking to Chip before we went on the air this morning about me refusing to pay any more money toward uh, streaming services or cable. I, I ditched cable. Uh, they, no, I'm not doing that anymore. So if it's anything more than $22 a month, guess what? I'm not doing it. But apparently, Chip, a lot of people are doing it. When it comes to car loans, Chip is an analyst for Wallet Hub and Chip, what in the world's going on here? We got cars that are averaging fifty thousand dollars a whack. We know they're selling cars, so people are going to the deep, deep debt now. Well, again, this is a classic example of the the cost of items going up, but wage is not rising <laughs> to match that. And Houston, well, and Texas in general, is um, does not seem to fare very well in that area. Houston more so than some of the other cities in our study, because Houston being a large metro area is a, a larger annual income. But what we found though, we based this on the percentiles are based on the average car loan balance over the median income. Houston has a pretty a pretty solid annual median income, but we're talking only about work income. So that doesn't include anything like investment income, rental income of $50,000 a year with an average auto loan balance of uh, about just under $21,000. And that's a debt-to-income ratio of about 41%. Ideally, you want a DTI of about 35 to 36%. So that means you have a little bit left over at the end of the month after paying your bills. And again, the lower or the better. Yeah, so at least you have a little bit of money so you can go buy you a box of donuts at the grocery store. At the, right. end, at the end of the work week. Um, so how does that compare to, say, five years ago? Well, it's, um, it's higher because post-pandemic, people are buying more cars. The cars are getting more expensive, obviously, because we still have, um, there's still some supply chain issues with the microprocessors that power a lot of these new cars. So people are spending more for used vehicles, driving up the cost. And again, the incomes are not keeping up with the rate of inflation for vehicles. So you're getting yourself into a little bit of trouble with that debt to income ratio. Keep in mind, too, gentlemen, that when we're talking about this debt to income ratio, this is just for car loans. This is not counting your credit card debt. Someone, one of you guys had mentioned your student loans. Yeah. <laughs> or not your student loans. Daughter's student and loans. Mortgages. Yeah. yeah. And this. <laughs> And just on a quick side note, um, you, with the life insurance you'd mentioned, I would recommend not letting any of your loved ones watch any episodes of Forensic Files. If you've got life insurance, keep them away from, <laughs> from watching Forensic Files because that uh, seems to be a use, kind of a motive there in a lot of those cases. Yeah. So uh, let me ask you, since you brought that up, you, when you were talking about the percentages of debt, you know, the 41% for the car debt, and it doesn't include the the house and the whatever else, the student loans and things. So, I mean, if you start adding that stuff up, you're well over 50, 60 percent, aren't you? Exactly. And what, what inevitably happens that you, you start falling behind on payments. And in a lot of cases, the car loan is usually the first one to stop. That's usually you. Theoretically, you, you know, to pay, keep your mortgage. And then what happens? Uh, sooner or later, the repo man's going to come find you. No. 
So, so what if you're if you're trying to pin it down just to to make it a little simpler? What ideally would your car percentage be? Twenty percent, ten percent? I mean, if somebody was really trying to look at their overall budget. Well, ideally, the lower the better. Ten percent would be a be a good number. But what you can do, um, the car dealerships, banks, they, you can um, log on and uh, they have these car loan calculators where you can type up how much you want to put down. And it's not a bad idea to treat it like a mortgage and maybe put down 20% of the cost of the car. That seems to be a good number to get those payments down. The more you can save up front, the higher the down payment, the lower your your um, monthly payment will be. Well, Chip, yeah. one of the things that I think that you didn't include in that is if you buy, let's just say, a three-year-old car that's got under 40,000 miles on it, you didn't include repairs. Because now you, you got maintenance and repairs on True. that car. So, therefore, the, the let's just say, $35,000 car that you went and got a note for, a used car, right, and, and uh, now you're going to have to keep up the maintenance on it. You're going to have to buy a set of tires, brakes, oil changes, and all the things that go along with maintaining the car, much less if some major catastrophic things happen to it. For instance, you lose a transmission or something like that. Right. Then you have to ask yourself, okay, well, what about all these ads that we see on TV for these rip-off places that are called <laughs> aftermarket warranties? Extended warranty, yeah. Oh, my God. My girlfriend got caught up in that, and that warranty was costing $200 a month. And when it came right down to it to repair the Jaguar that she had, of course, she set herself up for those kind of repairs. Yeah. Once those repairs were done, it was $4,000 out of her pocket in addition to whatever the extended warranty people decided they weren't going to pay because it wasn't included. Right on. Right. right. Now, as far as our study, we went on the assumption that when you're buying from a dealership that the car is going to have some kind of a warranty built into it, whether it's three years, 36,000 miles, which are, which are not bad deals as opposed to these aftermarket ones that you're talking about. We got suckered into a, a home warranty when we first got married, and a year later we were... Two years later, we were paying on a dishwasher and still paying the, the monthly premium, so we, we got out of that one real quick. It would have been cheaper just to go and buy a new yep. one dishwasher. Exa than, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Listen, they're in business because they make money on you and on me yes. and on Jeff and Mike. You know? Right. Yeah, so spend your money wisely. That's probably not the wisest thing to do. No. Well, there goes our next... Uh, our next advertiser. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess they're say, not going to be yeah. buying us anytime soon. Good. Please. We don't want to have anything to do Still with throw that. Mike and I into that. Him and I don't have any money. Hey, no, but you got, you got home have... warranties no, and but, car no. warranties. No, to, but to your point, one of my daughters had, uh, she got a divorce and got upside down in a car and all that stuff with the debt ratio we were talking about. That's what I happened to think of with her. Her ex fixed that up for her. But so when she bought, finally got to where she could buy a house, an older house, she bought that home warranty, which I strongly suggest that she not do. Man, she got her money out of that, though. I mean, she burned through that because she bought that house, and they said, yeah, we're covering everything. You know, I uh, got her washing machine fixed, got a new hot water heater, got some plumbing fixed, all kinds of stuff, and then, boom, she dropped them. But she got her money out, but that's about the only way. She only had it about a year. Hmm. And she's the only one I know of that ever got their money out of it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. So so what's the recommendation, Chip? What what should we do to not really get this thing out of whack in, in our budget? Well, we mentioned earlier, to, um, well, you can start by, buying, start by buying less expensive used vehicles or you know, save up, like we talked about, save up money up front to minimize the cost of your loan. Obviously, if you can afford to pay in cash, that's always nice. Hold on to your existing vehicle as long as you can. My father was a mechanic for 35 years, and he always says that 
But when the repair bills start to become, become more expensive than a monthly payment, then it's time to move on. Okay. Also, we would we talked about the DTI, and again, the lower the DTI, that was more favorable to lenders. We would recommend, of course, as a personal finance website, to check your credit score. You can sign on to WalletHub.com, get a free account, check your credit score before you go out shopping. Because if you have a good enough credit profile, you'll get some lower rates, particularly if you go to like a, a, some community banks and maybe some credit unions, you can get some really good um, terms on car loans. Well, to that point, you know, I wrote an article uh, with a couple of car reviews in it, and it was comparing a couple of trucks. One was a Honda Ridgeline, and the other one was a Toyota Tacoma. And they were both in my opinion, pricey, but that's the way that today's trucks are. But instead of going and buying the truck, the Ridgeline, let's just take the Ridgeline, for example, mm-hmm. that you can option up to fifty grand. why not back out $10,000 out of that by instead of buying the you know Z1 Ridgeline, whatever it may be, back out and buy the B3 one, you still got the same truck, it costs you ten thousand dollars less, and take that ten thousand dollars and put it in your pocket for a rainy day. That's a good point because for, for that ten thousand dollars, you maybe maybe you're paying for maybe one extra bell or whistle. You're more or less paying for that model for that particular trim <clears throat> number on the side of the vehicle. Right. But yeah, just um, be practical on things like that. And of course, anyone who goes out and pays sticker price for a vehicle is a sucker. <laughs> That's exactly right. And, and uh, you know, there was a time when inventory on car dealer lots was low. If there was any inventory at all, there's one Honda dealership that was on the east side of town uh, on the way to the drag strip, the former drag strip here in town. And for two years during the pandemic, we went by there. There was not one new nope. car on the lot. We thought they'd gone out of business. Yep. They didn't go out of business. Nope. But apparently they were selling whatever they could get in right online and right to the right to the yeah. homeowner, the, the the car buyer, and we're going, how do you stay in business like that? So there was this big gap in cars that were being turned in uh, off of loan, off a of lease, and and there were no used cars to buy, and what there was out there, they were getting snapped up in a hurry. So there's this cattywampus thing going on in the car industry and I think that we've caught up with that but now the price of cars has gone through the roof I mean I go to past a many dealerships on the way to work every day and those dealership lots they're packed full of cars but those cars are expensive for the most part and you mentioned trucks too and that's where that's where the big money is for these dealerships you mentioned the the Tacomas you go price a reasonably loaded Tacoma against a Toyota Camry, <laughs> you're going to see a dramatic shift in the increase of the price yeah. there. Yeah. People, people love their people love their truck. People love big trucks. And to Don's point, with these dealerships that didn't have any inventory during the pandemic, the salesman would call the prospective customer and say, "We got a truck coming at eleven o'clock. It's got nine cars on it. You want it? You want one? Come down." And then as they're unloading the truck, people were buying them. Wow, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Well. I think, how, how, how can a person calculate their debt-to-loan ratio and, and what, what, what would you do? What would you suggest yeah, that we do? What tools are there? Well, again, you can log on to it. You can do just a regular Google search for, um, for auto loan calculator, and it'll, and you fill in numbers, and it crunches the numbers for you, how much you're willing to spend per month projected interest rate, any down payment, any trade, and it'll spit out the numbers for you. But, but what if you wanted to go a step further and you want to know, okay, I, I can tell my car is going to cost me this much, and I can calculate that, but now I want to calculate my house note. I want to calculate my rent, my electric bill. I want to figure out my whole debt ratio, not just the little car part. Is there well, something out there that will well, do that? Well, there's a number, of, uh, there's a number, all kinds of software out there for for personal budgeting that will do that. But yeah, it all comes down to budgeting, of course. And then you um, you know, you cite all of your, your monthly expenses against your income and then whatever is left, then you can make a reasonable guess about how much you're willing to 
be able to, or how much you can afford to spend on a vehicle. You know, somebody right. asked me the other day, they said, uh, what car would you recommend? Said, well, I don't know. How much do you have to spend? Oh, I don't know. I really like this car. You know how much that car is? No, I don't know how much it is, but I like the car. Well, don't go into a dealership and go, and, <laughs> I don't know what I want to buy. But sell and me I, something. And, and, yeah, and I, and I don't know how much money I want to spend. Oh, my gosh. They're gonna if sell I were a salesman, gonna, I'd go, come on yeah, in. Where yeah, am I going on vacation next year? They're going to sell you the car with the biggest spiff on it. Yeah. They yeah, tried that on nice Kathy. Jaguar yeah. For you. yeah, we have a very nice Jaguar. <laughs> yeah, no, God, you. don't even say that word. <laughs> and no. it's beige. That's beige, a beige, a beige Jaguar. Jaguar with yeah. a new transmission. Yeah. So, at any rate, well, uh, interesting, interesting facts and figures. And uh, what does Wallet Hub do? Well, we're um, primarily a personal finance website, and we do studies that kind of shed some light on how you can improve your situations through personal finance. You can log on to wallethub.com, create an account. We offer free credit scores updated daily, free credit reports, and 24-7 credit, 24/7 credit monitoring. And, of course, and then you have access to a whole number of studies in addition to the ones that we've just done here today. Well, Chip, we sure appreciate you taking the time um, from the Carolinas to talk to us today. <laughs> oh, uh, sure. My pleasure. We appreciate it. We appreciate your interest in our work. Yeah, uh, most definitely do. And uh, hopefully we'll check in with you uh, in the not-too-distant future, and you'll say, Don, what do you think about that $100,000 a year raise that you got? What did you buy with it? <laughs> not a Jaguar. <laughs> 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 Apparently not. What's in your wallet? Yeah. A, yeah. Chip, thanks again. We appreciate you. How funny. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the games today. Thank, Thank you. You too. All right. Let's take a break, shall we? Sure. <sighs> Making my brain work way too Uh-oh. hard on a Saturday morning. I'm well, you got to all recover. All stuffy. I know. Trying to recover from a cold. I'm tired. I don't sleep at night. Well, the cold doesn't have anything to do with that. I just don't sleep at night anyway. <laughs> hey, the In-Wheel Time Car Talk Show is available 24-7 through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for In-Wheel Time Car Talk. And a new daily podcast, All several of them, as a matter mm-hmm. of fact, are available from your favorite podcast provider. We also video stream our live two-hour weekly show on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. The In-Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipe means when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the first Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here is the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie's and other location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located on 99, the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katy. Find yourself in Aggieland? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station. Located just around the corner from Kyle Field, it's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Going to Louisiana? The Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont is on I-10, so you can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants has the best Tex-Mex anywhere, and you're invited anytime. Your car is a direct reflection of you, so don't be satisfied with color fade or a dingy, dull appearance. Get rid of those terrible automated car wash scratches. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your save-the-paint company. John Gray and his team of detailing experts can help your car's finish without a full repaint. Searching for the real experts in window tinter windshield protection? Gulf Coast Auto Shield. Dash cams, radar detectors, Gulf Coast Auto Shield. Got a new car? Get that thing protected as soon as you take delivery. If you don't know which of the multitude of protection products to go with, John Gray will give you an honest opinion and won't sell you something you don't need or can't afford. John will help you understand the many options and pricing right on the spot. He's your guy to have your ride looking its best and protected too. See the -the state-of-the-art shop yourself. Free tours anytime. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is easy to get to. Located just south of the Southwest Freeway on the Sam Houston Parkway. Gulf Coast Auto Shield. Full service luxury car care today and online at gcautoshield.com if you'd like to get in touch with us shoot us an email the address is info at inwheeltime.com trips that you want to take but you want to take fido with you fido <laughs> or fido or Fifi, bean Fluffy. or whoever it is I that you bean. want yeah. bean the turtle bean the turtle he's in denver no right she she's, she's bean, she bean, bean yeah she bean yeah 
she. Okay. Uh, we could take the Sues, but we know what the Sues would do. Well, and she'd sleep all day. There's kind of a theme behind this um, that we're going to talk about. Let me get you going here. So these are six tips, and I told you earlier in the in the preview that my son took his pet when they went out to Wimberley, and they went. Uh, well, there it is, right tubing. there. Yep, there it is. They're all driving. Those three cats are driving. Their dogs are driving. So putting a cat in a pet carrier is like uh, playing a high voltage game of Operation. Some animals do travel well. Dogs are a different story. Uh, dogs love to go for rides. So do humans. So the number one thing that we're going to talk about, look at that. That's how they test uh, crash test dummies. They got crash test dogs as well. <laughs> so don't let your pet put his head out the window. We know that some dogs like it to ride and get the wind in their face. It's fun for them to you know, be out there and lapping up with their tongue. But you can get insects in your dog's face and their eyes. You get debris. It can hurt them very, very uh, badly and of course if your dog has a strong prey in their bloodline they might jump out the window chase a cat squirrel whatever the case out the window of the car if you need to put air in your dog's face don't let them do out the window put them in front of an air vent put them in front of one of the ac vents they like the wind in their face and they'll be just dandy and, and love you for it plus it leaves more room for me to hang my head out the there you go well you do that all the time don't let your pet lounge on the front seat. You wouldn't put a baby in the front seat, Mike, so why would you put your, fe- your pet in the front seat? You don't, just don't do that. Uh, restrain Rover with a harness or a crate. Now, there's all kinds of crates. I did some research on this. Crates go from like 50 bucks up to 500 bucks, depending on what you want to put your pet into in the back of the car or the, or the, the front seat or the back seat, however you want to do it. So make sure you got the proper one to do that buckle them up there's harnesses to put uh, seat belt attachments and things like you do with a car carrier um, you can find crash test results also on the ntsb site as well really? give plenty of water for dogs for dogs huh. uh plenty of water you know if you chug a bottle of water a red bull or something or a cold beer mike while you're driving on the road to be hydrated it's, your dog needs that too your pet needs that so <laughs> beer make sure God. that you got some nice fresh water it doesn't have to be warm make sure it's kind of like a room temperature but not really hot uh, you know they they need that uh, hydration as well stop every few hours you know if you're it's getting, the Sue's. i'm telling you that was the theme that these are all beagles on here i Don. see that um uh, so if you're taking a long trip and you do need an easy restroom or you need to stretch your legs, your pet does as well. You know, if they're housebroken or if they're a little older model of a dog or a cat, you know, they might have some issues with their bladders and things. So make sure you're taking care of that as well. And the last one is don't leave your pet in the car. Uh, you know, you're going to come back to the car and either have a broken window or your dog's going to be missing or, or even a worst case scenario there. So... Just some tips on it. Take care of your pet. You know, treat them like everything else that you take care of in your car, and you'll be just fine. Went to the grocery store. This was, uh, I don't know, about a month ago. <clears throat> and there was a car that we parked next to, and the car had a dog in it. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, oh, well, they'll be right back. So we do our grocery shopping. It takes about 30, 40 minutes mm-hmm. or so. Come back out. The dog is still in the car. The car's not running. The windows aren't open. The dog, you can tell, is distressed. Yeah. What did we do? We called the police. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the police came, and um, I don't know what happened after that. I don't know whether they broke the window, but uh, whoever the dumbass was that uh, left the dog in the car, they should have been arrested mm-hmm. and at least had the window broken on the car. Right. Who does that? I, Who does that? Bad people. Bad people that had no consideration. Got no, no concept. Golly. So take care of your pets. I was they, I was ticked. They took little Lou. Uh, Lucille is their is their uh, dog, and they had a harness on him, like a little life vest with a handle on the back. So yeah. if, and just pick him up, put him in the water, take him out of the water. It was very cool. So time now for this hour's car review here on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Mr. Mars uh, is driving a 2025 Subaru Forester. Yes, sir. Are I you not can... ready for the review? I was getting George ready. Sorry. Yes, I am ready for the review. All right, Absolutely. Go. George Coleman is So I was driving or? the 2025 Subaru Forester Premium. Now, this is the sixth gen of the Forester, and it's been redesigned. It comes in five trims, base, premium, sport, limited, and touring. So we were driving the premium. This is a small SUV that it, Subaru considers it the right size. As passengers, it'll hold five people. Up front, you're going to find this new narrow LED headlights. They got the, the responsive headlights that'll turn with you as you go. LED fog lights, tail lights, all the good LED lights all the way around. Had the panoramic moonroof, not a sunroof, but a moonroof. And uh, they have a 
panoramic moon panoramic roof. moon it's for when it's a full moon so it also has okay. usable roof racks that are now standard on the Forester instead of an option. It has a power lift gate with hands-free, uh, the foot sensor on it, and it rolls on some nice 7 by 17 inch wheels. And it's got a new dash design this year. It had the cloth seating material uh, and it had a folding rear seat. The uh, con rear seat has a console that has cup holders on it, which is always a nice thing. 11.6-inch Starlink multimedia system in the middle of the dash. Nice big screen to use. And the uh, it also has a cargo cover in the back to keep things out of sight, out of mind. USB-Cs, got A's and C's all the way around. Had a wireless charger that I thought was real strange. It wouldn't work with my phone for several days till I figured out there's a little button up there right beside where you lay the phone. You have to turn it on instead of just setting the phone there like most of them do. You actually have to turn it on after that. Worked just fine. Now, we had under the hood, we had a 2.5 liter uh, boxer type flat engine, 180 horsepower, 178 pound feet. It is an all wheel drive vehicle with a CVT. Now, you can, there is an option to step up to where you can get one that'll have an automatic that you can use paddle shifters on, but we didn't have that. Tow rating is 1,500 pounds, which doesn't sound like a lot, but this is a small SUV. It'll tow your jet ski, it'll tow a small camper. You know, 1,500 pounds covers a lot of things that you're actually towing. Now, in the city, the EPA says you should be looking for about 26 miles per gallon out on the Highway 33 for a combined mileage of 29. Now, I got 31.8 miles in this vehicle driving at 384.7. Now, I do put a lot of miles on it across the highway, Jeff. You know, mm -hmm. I'm kind of out yep. there in the sticks. Yep. So yep. I kind of lean to that. So it kind of changes the way it does. Now, I will say also, I, I like driving this vehicle. The steering's been updated this year. This year, they actually derived the steering mechanisms from the WRX, the oh. sporty model. So it's got some really nice steering. It's quieter. They made some changes in the manufacturing. Drive, drive by wire. Uh, I don't even yeah. didn't even look at that. But they did make some changes in the manufacturing on how they put the car together, how it's assembled, where they put the glue. They changed the glue. They changed some of the material to keep it a little bit silent. You know, the sound deadening materials <coughs> and. Uh, the chassis itself is 10% stiffer, so it doesn't kind of move and wiggle and squeak as much. So it's, it's much quieter than what it's been in the past. Now, the base model for this is 29695 Now, this is the 2025 oh, Superman Forester. And uh, base trim price, which you step up to the premium, which is the next level up, is 31995 Now, our as-tested price, so we have very few options, so it was only 34590 for this with the all-wheel drive. So if you're looking for something to compare it to in that small SUV, CUV category, a Kia Sportage. I have a friend that's got one of these. He loves it. 2719 is the base to get into it. Hmm. The uh, 2024, that was 25. Now, the 2024 Toyota RAV4, I haven't got a pricing on the 25 yet, but it's 30025 And then the Ford Bronco Sport, you can get into it for 29950 Again, these are base model prices, and then you kind of option it up from where you go from there. So overall, all in all, it's a little bit smaller than some of the other Subarus, but I think with the things they've done to it for 25, like the WRX steering and, and the stiffening the chassis and a lot of other things, it's really a nice driver. The, the, the later vi video you had of it, the color's nice, because Subaru, to me, sometimes puts some unique color combinations on their vehicles with the, well, the, the cladding and things and all that. It kind of doesn't, you look at it, you go, ooh. And why did they do that? But the, col the solid colors, like the grays and the, and the softer tones, I like that. The interior is nice on it. So It, it is. It's, it's kind of a nice compromise with uh, the big seats and stuff right. uh, to make things so it's kind of, it doesn't hurt so bad to get it wet. Yeah. Hey, today's In Wheel Time Car Talk Show is sponsored by the group of original Loopy Tortilla Restaurants in Houston, Beaumont, and College Station, Gulf Coast Auto Shield, and Pro-Am Auto Accessories. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation 
installation bays. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through ProAm.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge and Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. The award-winning In Will Time Car Talk Show brings you great guest interviews each week from manufacturers and suppliers to the aftermarket, racers, enthusiasts, and other friends just like you and me who love to talk about all things automotive. The In Will Time Car Talk Show takes it to the road, too, with remotes at Tailpipes and Tacos, Woody's Waterfront Car Show, and the Hemi Hideout. In Will Time's live video and audio stream can be found on the iHeartRadio app, YouTube, Facebook, and InRealTime.com every Saturday, 10 a.m. to noon Central Time, or grab a podcast anytime from your favorite podcast provider. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InRealTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, Tune in, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.